All right, y'all. I thought this was super interesting. Taraji P. Henson, right? Very famous, well-known actress, very talented, you know, individual. She's in this new movie. Well, it's a new old movie, The Color Purple. So it's a it's a remake of the original Color Purple that had Oprah in it, right? So they're remaking it. And I believe the movie comes out Christmas Day. This is not a promotion. Let me get that clear. This is not a promotion. I ain't got nothing against the movie, but it's not a promotion, all right? Anyway, she says something super interesting. She's being interviewed about her role in The Color Purple. And she was talking about all types of spirits entering into her body. And let me just play this clip because we need to have a couple conversations about what she said. Playing these characters, because it's very spiritual what we do as actors. You're on the set. You have your chakras all open. You're allowing this character to use your body as a vessel. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so you have to learn how to flip the switch on and flip it off. Otherwise, it could drive you mad. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> because, no, because it, it's spiritual what we do, you yes. understand? Yeah. We allow these characters and these stories to use our bodies as a vessel. That is right. that is a real, mm -hmm. like, if you think about it, that's you allowing this other energy. Project. I let the character speak to me. Um, what we do as actors is very spiritual. Um, you're on set, and that's why I don't, I don't pick a lot of roles because it's spiritual and I'm I'm all alive and I'm open and my chakras are open and I'm letting this character use my body as a vessel to tell its truth and so when I'm open like that a lot of energies can't be around me I'm sorry because energy is strong y'all and you gotta be particular about who you keep around you like seriously if, the, if they if they down and they cloudy and and they Downtrodden, and you, if they got a cloud around you hanging around, you think you're not gonna get wet? <laughs> you gotta be very careful. So, I'm very particular about the projects that I take on because that's spirit. You understand? But At the end of the day, for me, it was a lot of ancestry work, blood work is what I call it, when you really have to lean on them. And there were times where, you know, the surrendering is so deep that I felt like I just had to truly listen to the ancestors and all of their cries and their woes and everything that they've been through so that I could honor that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where I'm going to leave it. Okay, hold on. Let's just get it very, very clear. Chakras, demonic. Ancestor worship, you already know, demonic. Anything that you're doing, tapping into the spiritual realm, that is outside of God. And when I say God, I mean Jesus Christ, because there's a lot of other people who worship other false gods, little g. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. If you are tapping into the spiritual realm, and if you are not, Seeking Jesus, speaking the Holy Spirit, you're tapping into something demonic. Because let me just put it like this. And they were very open about it. They were very open about it. But let me put it like this. If you're creating a, a project in this circumstance, let's just, you know, call it what it is. If you're making a movie that is not glorifying God but is sheerly for entertainment. And if you're tapping into the spiritual realm to create that movie that has nothing to do with God, but is just to entertain people, to sell tickets, to get people in those seats so that you can make revenue and profit, that is demonic. That is demonic. You sitting here telling me that you're allowing these quote unquote characters to enter you and use you as a vessel? For what purpose? The only one that should be allowed into our bodies to use us as a vessel is a Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. The one that knows no evil, but only knows good and righteousness. 
Otherwise, you're tapping into some really, really demonic stuff. And, you know, it's interesting because Taraji. Um, she's talked about God in the past and she's got a lot of praise you know, for some of her statements that she made about God. Now, let me play this one right here, because this is one in particular that I, that I remember. Let me play this real quick. I don't want to get myself in any trouble, mm -hmm. but just look at the lives of the people who said I'm the greatest and how it ended. That's all I'm going to say. Oof. God is the greatest. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I do. And God put you here to do his work. Check your ego. I don't strive to be the greatest because that's serving something else. The humble man knows that God gave him those talents to change and shift the world into a better place. But when you get into I, me, I, 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 that's another God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. In what? a real way. Yes. Yes. Because what you're trying to do in, the, in that moment is be better than that person. So check your fucking ego. Ooh. Because somebody else may deliver the message in a way that somebody else will hear it better than the way you're delivering the message. That's why you got to check your fucking ego. And there's room for everybody. Okay. A lot of people like that clip. I personally don't like that clip. I don't like that clip. I, I understand what she's trying to say. Like, you should only serve God and you shouldn't be doing things purely for selfish motives, which I agree with but you should be doing things to please God and to advance his kingdom, right? Um, but you can't serve two masters. You can't serve two masters. It's either you're serving God or you're serving yourself. And, you know, I keep seeing these clips because they're doing a lot of promo for, you know, the color purple, the new color purple movie. And Taraji is very upset with the amount of money that she's been making throughout her career. Um, which I find to be very, very interesting when millionaires complain about not having enough money. I just, I, I don't have any, any sympathy, empathy, whatever you want to call it. I don't have any of that for those types of conversations. You've made so much money. You've made more money than 97% of people who are walking on this earth, but yet you're still not satisfied. You're still not satisfied. Let me just play this clip so y'all understand what I'm talking about. It's still not mathing, and I'm really getting tired of black women having the same story. It's breaking my heart. Like 20 plus in the game, it breaks my heart. It's like every time you achieve something really incredible, it's almost like the industry looks at it as a fluke. Like, ah, oh, that was like some one-time thing. So you fall back to the bottom, and you got to negotiating and fight tooth and nail to get what you made the last time when where's my raise i haven't had, i haven't seen a raise in my income since proud mary and almost had to walk away from color purple yes ma'am who said what yes ma'am yes ma'am because you know what if i don't take a stand how am I making it easy for Fantasia and Danielle and Hallie and, and, and Felicia? Then what, why, why am I doing this? If it's all just for me, what the, why are you here? We are to service each other. God is very clever. He put us on this earth and he made us all look different. He made it complicated. We need to figure it out. And we can, and we are. You have to look at, look at the glass. It's half full. It's always half full. Look. I understand kind of the essence of what she's saying is like, yo, I've been in the game for a long time. And she has. She's been in the game for a long time. She's been in the game for a long time. There was another clip where she was talking about the amount of money that she was making as opposed to the amount of money that actually like hits her bank account. And she was saying, let me see. I don't know if I can find a clip, but she was basically saying like, yo, I might get paid $10 million for a movie. But what y'all don't know is that I have a team. I have a team, number one. And number two, the government going to come for them taxes. So when she signs a deal for a $10 million movie, that's 50% off the top that's gone to taxes. And then she has a team that takes up another 30%. So she might be lucky to walk away with maybe two, $3 million, maybe a little bit more than that. 
And she was saying that that's not fair compared to, you know, her counterparts or compared to, you know, a white actress or a white actor or so be it, you know? And she feels like that she deserves to make more money. And she almost felt like walking away in some instances because she wasn't being treated fear fairly. And I, I get that. I, I understand that. I get it. But here's the thing. Let's just keep it real. Let's just keep it a buck. And I'm not trying to pick on Taraji too much, but I'm just using this as an example. Let's just keep it real. Taraji, what do you do for a living? I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. What do you do for a living? You get paid a minimum, let's just say a minimum of a million dollars to act like another person. Where they do that at? Here in the United States of America, you can make seven figures to act like another person. It's really weird and crazy if you really sit down and think about it. It really is. If you can't be happy with a million dollars, you'll never be happy. If you can't be happy with a million dollars, you'll never be happy if you make a hundred million dollars. Because you're always going to feel like you're missing out on something. You're always going to feel like somebody else is making more than you, which they are. That's just the fact of the matter. That's just the world. That's, that's this earth. That's the world where, where we, we are in constant competition with, with each other. And it will never stop until the day we die. It'll never stop until the day we die. Because if Taraji is making 50 million per movie, then somebody else is making 100. And she's always going to feel like she's on the short end of the stick. She's always going to feel underappreciated. And guess what? You probably are underappreciated. You probably are due respect that you are not receiving from this world. But if we're looking at it from a Christian perspective... I don't need no validation from this earth, from this world. My validation comes from above. My validation comes from Christ. And I, if I am blessed enough to be able to act like another person and make seven figures plus per year in doing so, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. My God loves me. I can take care of my family. I can live comfortably. I think the thing that's got us so messed up is like in the entertainment industry, there's an expectation to live this lavish lifestyle of luxury. So, yeah, maybe if you're making a million dollars or two million dollars per movie and you're living in L.A., you're living in California or you're trying to live in these super exclusive neighborhoods and hang around in these super exclusive you know, circles, then, yeah. That money that you're making, those millions of dollars that you're making, it's going to go by pretty quickly. And you're quickly going to feel like you ain't made nothing or you're not earning what you should be earning. But you don't got to chase the things of this world. There's nothing wrong with living a humble lifestyle. You could be rich. You could be wealthy, but you could live a humble lifestyle and not serve the money, but serve God, as you were saying. It's just crazy to me, like, so many of us, and I'm not trying to pick on Taraji P. Henson, like, specifically, but, like, so many of us, even myself, we have lost touch of how blessed we actually are. Did you wake up this morning? Are you healthy? Are your kids healthy? Is your family healthy? Is your friends healthy? Even if they're not healthy, even if they're battling something, well, hey, they're blessed to be here and be battling something so that you could still look them in their eyes and tell them that you love them or vice versa. We live in the most well-off country on this earth. Ain't no bombs hitting here. Ain't nobody invading here. Well, depending on who you ask, right? But that's another conversation. There's so much for us to be grateful for, but as human beings, we choose to focus on what we don't have as opposed to what we do have. 
And that puts us in a perpetual state of lack. And we're always chasing. We're always chasing the next thing. That's why I said, if you're not happy making a million dollars plus to act like another person, you're not going to be happy when you make a hundred million because you're going to want 300 million. So what are we really doing it for? What are we really doing it for? You already see how dark and demonic the industry is. These actresses are telling you that they're channeling ancestors, that they're channeling other spirits that are not the Holy Spirit in order to make a movie that you are going to sit down and consume for an hour, an hour and a half, two, sometimes three hours. So now you're participating in that spiritual disobedience and you're opening up your spirit, your soul, your heart in order to be tampered with. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm looking at it too deep. Maybe I'm looking at it too deep. Maybe I'm looking at it too deep. Let me know what y'all think. Get in my comments, like this video. I'm out, y'all.